This video is brought to you by PPA, Professional Photographers of America. You don't have to be a YouTube creator to know that YouTubers love making I switch from this brand to this brand because those videos usually perform well on the platform and I don't knock it. Sometimes it's interesting to hear someone's like reasoning for doing so, but I think that those videos are becoming more difficult to make because it's just harder and harder to justify switching when camera tech is just so good across the board. I feel like the biggest reasons to shoot a specific brand are not found or it's not going to be found really soon on a spec sheet anymore. Like for example, the Fuji X100V, one of my favorite cameras of all time, slow autofocus, terrible battery life, but it inspires the hell out of me to go shoot. Me being someone that shoots Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony, there are reasons why I still lean towards using Sony as my main primary system. And it has nothing to do with specs. For example, when choosing a brand, lens selection and the ecosystem of lenses is really important. And Sony's, in my opinion, is pretty much unmatched. And it's for those sexy, compact, wide aperture primes. Some of my favorites, the 14 millimeter 1.8, the 20 millimeter 1.8, the 24 1.4, the 35 1.4, the 50 1.2, and even the 135 millimeter 1.8. Sony also has a ton more third party options available for those who can't afford all those expensive G Master lenses. Now, all I need for Sony is to make an 85 1.2 because that 85 1.4 is outdated for sure. And a 200 millimeter F2. See, on the Canon side, the RF glass that they have is pretty much legendary. 50 1.2, the 85 1.2, which is my favorite, and the 28 to 70 F2, which is unique, you know? They just lack the affordable third-party options. Same thing with Nikon. They have good glass. It's just they don't have that sexy, fast aperture glass that I have with Canon and Sony. You know, preferably the 35, 85 millimeter focal range. They only have f1.8 lenses. And I know that's going to change really soon. But as of right now, they don't. Now with the camera bodies, we got the A1, the Z9, and the R3. The R3 is not technically a flagship, right? But still, that's just it's the top dog right now. Out of those three, the A1 is still my favorite camera even though the R3 and the Z9 outperform the A1 in many different ways. And it's weird to say the A1 has the oldest tech out of the three, right? So for example, I do think that the Canon R3 has slightly better autofocus performance in both photo and video than, you know, compared to the R1 and even the Z9, but not by much, right? I feel like the Canons are just the easiest to use. I love the straight out of camera skin tones and color that I'm getting when I'm shooting in the studio. I love the ergonomics. I love that all the mirrorless cameras have flippy screens. It caters to someone like me. And let's not overlook the Canon R5, you know, which is the closest thing to a perfect camera that I could think of. It's such a good camera, especially after all those firmware updates, you know? With the Z9, there are no compromises, right? They're not competing with the cinema line like Canon and Sony are. So you're getting the holy grail hybrid camera, the beefiest video specs on the market. AK60 raw, all internal, no overheating, no time limit much better ergonomics and build quality, the light up buttons for the studio I love, and the list goes on and on. Despite some of those advantages that are actually kind of important to me, you know, um, the A1 just sets itself apart with its form factor and the versatility that it gives me. So let's just say I'm gonna go shoot the Chicago Cubs. I can mount a 400 to eight, slap on a battery grip, and I'm set. When I'm shooting portraits on location, um, I could take the battery grip off and now I have a super compact mirrorless camera that's not going to take up a lot of space in my camera bag. I also feel like it's worth noting that me being an introvert, I don't like a lot of attention being drawn to me. And I do like that the smaller camera allows me to be a little bit more low key in public. And I say that because when I take the R3 out on location, I do notice more people looking at me like, what is he doing with that thing? And more people talk to you, you know, in, in the middle of the shoot, you know? There's also less of a chance of getting kicked out of a location because security thinks that I'm shooting some kind of commercial work or something like that. You know, it looks like you're doing it more for fun when, with a smaller setup. It's just, it is what it is. As you know already, um, I, I praise Canon a lot because I really love shooting Canon. That's like my, I would consider my second main system. You know, um, if I mainly shot sports, uh, I'm 100% going with the Canon R3 um for its superior autofocus um the eye control which is definitely underrated 
But for everything else, um, I would actually pick up the Canon R5. Like I said, it's almost a perfect camera, especially after all the firmware updates, but the rolling shutter would be an issue when shooting sports with it. And that's why the Sony A1 kind of gives me the best of both worlds. Speed of the R3, the resolution and size of the Canon R5, plus the... What do you need? You need Robux? I think this is the perfect segue to plug my sponsor for today's video because I mean, Lord knows I've, I've spent way too much money on Robux this summer. Today's sponsor is PPA, Professional Photographers of America. So why should you consider becoming a member with PPA? For only $27.92 a month, not only do you get access to $15,000 worth of equipment insurance, data loss recovery services, a huge library of educational videos, but you also get really valuable sales tools. See, like now more than ever, it's hard to stand out and you should make it a point to not get complacent. These tools are designed to help you increase your exposure, improve your sales process, and also get a better understanding of how to market yourself on the internet because it's so tough. Join me and 33,000 other photographers looking to grow their business. Follow the link in the description and use the code for a special discount on your membership. And also the A1 just got an update recently where you can shoot lossless compressed, large, medium, and small raw files, kind of like the Z9, which I absolutely love. So like there's definitely some magic happening there with those compression algorithms. You can basically crunch these file sizes down to a 30 megabyte file, a 20 megabyte file without reducing image quality, or at least from what I can tell. On the video production side of things, I personally don't care if I'm shooting Canon or Sony. Um, I actually prefer the, so the Canon straight out of camera image more than the Sony one. Not saying that it's bad, I just prefer the Canon one. The thing with Sony, again, it goes back to those lenses. So I guess the point of this video is to point out that there is more to a camera than just the spec sheet. And that I feel is gonna be more and more the case going down the line, unless there's some major breakthrough technology that's gonna be coming out. Um, I don't foresee that. We had the megapixel race, we had the 8K race. I wonder what's next, I don't know. Computational, who knows? But um, if you're someone that really like is one of those people that one brand is better than another and you're like your hardcore like mm, like fanboy of, of one brand it's always fun to banter it's always fun banter right one brand oh you're a canon shooter whatever but if you're serious about this i think that you may have some insecurity <laughs> issues because or just maybe not not in tune with what else what else is going on around you okay because all, all all of these brands are putting out like seriously great tech there are some that might be better than the other. And I know that, and, and I've tested the cameras and I know which one is slightly better. Like we're testing side by side, I know which one can perform better, but it's like comparing a thousand, thousand horsepower car to a 900 horsepower car. You know, it's, they're all so much, they're, they're all capable of doing everything that you need. Just one may be doing it a little bit better. But I do want to just touch on really quick uh, Fuji, for example. Like I said, the Fuji X100V is not the greatest technical camera. It's far from it. That's it. Actually, the fact that it's not a fast autofocusing camera, some of its flaws are part of like the character of the camera, part of the charm of using it. You know, you actually have to try sometimes to get a nice photo, and that just doesn't do it for you. You know, um, and the way it feels in the hand, the way it makes you feel those things are also very important that we don't talk enough about. And I know how this may come off, right? The guy with all the cameras is, is saying this, you know, it must be easy for me to say, but you know, the A1, although it's still like one of the top cameras on the market, I could easily reach for the other ones that are better in many ways that I care about, like sh shooting in the studio and you know, things of that nature. I'm just like, I just use the camera that best fits me. Even if it was the a7 IV, you know, shooting on location, what do I need all that stuff for if I'm not gonna use it? I, I would probably pick the a7 IV over the R3 and the Z9 to shoot on location because of that. Because of being low key, being not on everyone's radar is more important to me. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I'm, I'm gonna cut it off here because I can keep going. I might as well just start a podcast at this point. But. All right, you know what? 
Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you want to support what I do here on YouTube, um, I have Lightroom presets that I edit all my portraits with. Uh, I have a retouching tutorial, and I also have the Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish, the best modifier on the planet. I have that. I'll leave a link down below. All right, talk to you guys later. Uh, yes, sir.